you know this this is called multimeter this is called multimeter follow me till the end i'm going to show you how to use this are you a technician you need a multimeter i'll show you right now how to use the multimeter remember you got an electronic board you are on the electrical installation you need to test your continuity you need to test your dc voltage you need to test your ac voltage you need to test a fuse you need to test a transistor you need a multimeter to test to measure your company multimeter help you to identify and to find the fault in your appliances multimeter will help you to identify the broken component multimeter will help you to know if the current is flow your dc voltage your ac voltage actually a technician need a multimeter essential tool a tool is very important on your repair remember to fix you need to identify the broken one replace and then it works stay tuned till the end of this video i'll show you how to use your multimeter welcome to my channel welcome to the channel of technician one call to the channel of entrepreneur welcome to the channel of business you're using your multimeter you got the lead this lead the red one can stay on the red sign and then the common one which is actually a neutral or the common is the black one and put in this position is the off position put is the alternative voltage ac Put it in this position, meaning that this one is V direct current, direct voltage. Ohms is a ohm meter. So there you can test your resistance. They use this position to test your diode and to test your continuity. This is your multimeter. Why multimeter? Because you have a multiple function. In this is the off button, as you can see. So let's show you the basic one and the essential one, which you always use in this meter, and then we perform some tests, okay? I'm going to use this meter and perform some four tests or three tests so that you can understand how to use your multimeter, your alternative current. From this posi off position, we're going to go for the second position. We go from off to V alternative. Alternative voltage, I put in this position, and then I will do my measurement. For the alternative voltage AC, we put it in this position and then we put the common black here and then we put the red one here as it is. And we're going to do the test of a alternative voltage. Where do you find alternative voltage? Alternative voltage is the voltage you got in your house. You got in your socket. Uh, in South Africa, we use 220 volt. In America, I believe they use 120 volt. The alternative voltage is here. So, putting my meter here will allow me to test the alternative voltage. And then, be careful because it can shock you guys. The voltage, if I put there and then I put there, I should have the 220 with tolerance. It gives me 240, which is all right. You can see this. So, I'm testing a alternative voltage. In the next position, to here. Where do you find the direct voltage? The direct voltage, you find it... In your battery, like this one. In your battery, like this one. It can be the car battery. It can be an ordinary battery, which we use. We use it in our remote. Okay? We use in our remote. Direct voltage, like this one, you have to know the negative and the positive. So, the positive should be the red. And the negative should be here, as you can see. And then we have uh 7.9 almost 8 volts and we know this battery is the battery of 9 volt battery this is a 9 volt battery so if it's showing us 7.8 battery have lost its capacity it's not that well but it still have voltage okay and if we use this battery we can see that this battery is 1.5 volts let's test it and see how many voltage still left there 1.5 volts is giving us uh 1.3 it's also have lost some capacity, but it's still okay. All right. So that is how you test your alternative voltage. And that's how you test your, your direct voltage. Okay. The next position will be ohms or capacitance. Ohm and capacitance. In this position, 
we can test two components. You can test a resistor here and you can test the capacitor here for this particular meter. Okay. If I want to test a resistor, I'm going to put it on ohm and make sure on the screen I got ohms. Okay. We're going to use this meter to test or to measure the value of the resistance on this resistor. Okay. The value of the resistance in this resistor. Let's measure it. We measure it and then you can see yourself. Check on the screen and tell me what you got there. You got there 8.7 ohms. 8.7 ohms. With the tolerance, the difference are not big. 8.2 and 8.7. And 8.7, we can actually see that this resistor is good. Resistor can cut and will not have a value which is written on it. Okay? So, you can use a multimeter to test the resistor of your speaker. Like this speaker... Uh, we got 8 ohms value of the resistance. So you test it here and you can see that we got 7.5. Consider of resist of the tolerance, 7.5 is very good for this speaker. You can use a multimeter on the position of ohms to test a fuse. Let's see. If we test this fuse and then it show you 0, 0, that means it's good. But if it show you OL, that means it's damaged. And then you can see we got 0 0.5, which is good. That means the position of resistor or the, this position can help you also to test a fuse. I say this position can help you again to test your capacitor because we got a symbol of capacitance here. So to test the capacitor, we need to change the scale by pressing here. When I press here, the, the, the symbol of ohm will change to capacitance. And you see nanofarad. So I will increase the, the scale. And then I increase it for here yeah, for uh, 1,000 uh, 1, nanofarad. It depends what type of capacitor you want to test. I increase it to 10 microfarad. Because I want to test a capacitor of 330 microfarad. So my scale should be higher than 330 microfarad. Let me increase it again. Increase. I increase it to 10,000 microfarad. So I have a good scale here yeah, to test my capacitor. Any electrolytic capacitor keep energy on i'll advise you to discharge the capacitor by putting a, a bridging the two legs and be careful when you are bridging the two legs bridging the two legs or discharge the capacitor so that you'll be able to test it properly because you have scaled your your capacitor meter on 10,000 microfarad, which is actually bigger than 330 microfarad. Now I'm going to make sure the, the, the lead, the red lead is on this position and the common lead is black. Okay. Now I'm going to take my electrolytic capacitor. I will going to put the black in the negative because this bar is a negative. I'm going to put it into the negative after I discharge the capacitor and then I will not touch it. I will not touch in the second lead and then I'll put it there and read my meter and read my meter. What do we have there? Can you check and tell me what microfarad you got on the screen of the meter? We got 310 microfarad. 310 microfarad. And what is written here is 330 microfarad. So the difference of 20 microfarad is just the tolerance. So I will tell you this capacitor is good because it's having the, capaci the capacitance I measure with my multimeter is close to the nominate uh, value written on the capacitor, okay? And then if that value was, uh, was very inferior to that, I will, I will suggest to replace the capacitor. But on this case, the capacitor is good. That's why your multimeter is good for you to test your component, guys. If this video is interesting, don't forget to subscribe. So subscribe to this channel because on this channel, we only share, as you can see. Go to the second one. You can check here. You got a symbol of diode and then you got symbol of bars. This bars mean is making noise. And this one is a symbol of diode, which is another component in electronic. So on this case, we're going to show you how to test. We're going to test a diode. This is one diode. This is a one diode. I'm going to show you how to test the diode. For you who doesn't know what is a diode, that is there. It's a semiconductor who allow the current to flow on one direction. It's a semiconductor who allow the current to flow only on one direction. On the diode, we got cathode and anode. If you consider that anode is like positive, a cathode is like negative. When you see this mark, it's our cathode and the other side is our anode. So as the symbols here, yeah, 
this place here we got this bar is actually our cattle and this is our anode so we have already put the scale on the position of test diode okay so now i'm going to put my positive on anode i'll put my positive my red lead on anode and then i put the black one on cathode and then i got my test which is normal 0 0.5 and then i'll turn again because the current flow on one side the other side should not flow anything okay that's good is ol meaning that is blocked which is normal so one of our tests should pass and the other test should not pass first test it should pass second test it shouldn't pass that's how you identify a good diode the diode can get into short circuit and then when you put it like instead of pass it make you zero zero or it make you t a continuity bars okay that's how the multimeter is very good to use in your electronic component okay so that's how you test your diode now there's another option when we can scale it to just uh, a continuity and when we do that it make it make a bars as we are and then if i take my fuse and then i can put it here and test the continuity when it's good it make this noise if it's not good it's not gonna make noise very simple guys if you go to this position you'll be testing your m You'll be testing your amp, your alternative amp. That means the current flow in your CPU. I hope this video was very useful for you. And then if it was useful, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because this is a channel of entrepreneur, channel of technician, channel of business people. You are a technician, right? Follow me. Remain on this channel, subscribe and share.